alternative process photography cyanotype. We're going to be looking at wet cyanotype process today and we're going to particularly be looking at the two different ways that you can approach this. So this first little part of the video is about using pre-prepared paper. Collect together all of the items that you would like to use. You may want to make different marks, different ways of splashing and applying the different things like your vinegar. You might want to try lemon juice. Um, I wouldn't do bleaches at the moment. I would always tend to do those afterwards because they're a little bit easier to control, but it's entirely up to you how much you want to experiment at the end of the day. So here I've just placed the objects on and then obviously you can see quite roughly I'm just throwing all the different powders into position and then as soon as that's done you want to place your cyanotype outside. Um, this picture of a cup of tea is just to symbolise that obviously you're going to have a lot of wait and time on the go while you're doing this process. Uh, it's a lovely day when I was doing my cyanotypes, so the actual exposure times were around about 30 minutes for the dry cyanotype and a little bit later on I left the wet cyanotype on for over an hour. Obviously you can use this time to do other things, you might want to pre-prepare papers for another day, you might want to collect more samples. Uh, for your herbarium or you know cut out some extra bits from magazines that you might want to use for the printmaking. Once you're happy that the exposure has gone to the extent that you want it to and in my case I really like this rust colour so when it starts to go this really orangey colour that's when I, I feel at the happiest. You may not be able to allow your cyanotype to go to that kind of colour. I'm using really, really opaque objects here to create my prints. You might have to do different exposure time tests if you're wanting to do negatives. The density of your digital negative will have a really, really big impact on how long you're able to leave it in the sun. And also the kind of depth of blue that you will be able to achieve. On this one I decided I would try and use some vitamin C, it's uh, something that is quite often used in photography and you can develop photographs using caffeinol which is a combination of coffee and vitamin C. So I just thought obviously it would have some kind of reaction um, and it did, it turned everything like a really really bright blue and it happened straight away. You can see on here when I remove the objects that there are little specks that have gone, like have deviated in colour. I think this kind of orangey tone is mainly the stuff that was hit by both vinegar and by the vitamin C. So for this one I'm mixing up a fresh batch of chemicals and we're going to do a wet on wet cyanotype. So here I'm just doing a really really quick application. I'm not really that bothered about whether it's even or you know whether there's extra thicknesses in places because I'm going to leave it for such a long exposure time it shouldn't really matter. Take your time to place all of your objects into position again. Obviously um, arranging the objects themselves is, is one of the big parts of the artistry in itself. So once you're happy with your arrangement. Things will have started to dry depending on what type of paper that you'll have been using. In my case I'm using Fabriano cold press watercolour paper and it's quite thick and it's quite absorbent so you can see um, it's already changing colour as well because I'm doing this process in the light of the window. Again it doesn't really matter at this point because of the opacity of the, the objects that I'm using. Once you're happy and you've splashed on vinegar and water and um, in this case saffron and vitamin C then obviously cover it over with another plane of glass and take it outside to leave it in the sun. Another part uh, of the photography game is the waiting around and you know again it's up to you what you do. I tend to just chill out. Um, that's, that's what makes this process so enjoyable. I can be creating work while also chilling out. 
I created a yard in um, solely really for, for these kind of processes it, it's and also to have a nice space to chill out in it's obviously it's invaluable uh, for this kind of process to have live and fresh specimens so this is a wet on wet cyanotyping see the rust color hasn't come through quite as much um, and perhaps that's because I could have left it a little bit longer this was left for twice the time of the dry cyanotype and then here you can see what happens at the very finish and I think the the wet on wet cyanotype is actually a, a much darker Prussian blue than the dry ones so again that's going to be up to you uh, and your personal decision making process on whether you want a really nice deep dark or a, a, a little bit more of a matte blue colour so have fun experiment you always you know again take notes mental notes absolutely fine and if you've enjoyed this do like and subscribe as everybody says